Right here we have the graph. Visual, right? On the uh, x-axis we have time, t. On the y-axis we have Bg for blood glucose. Okay? So for blood glucose, we all have sugar in our blood right now, every single one of you. <coughs> we have a range. We like it right in this range. So we don't want it too low. We don't want it too high. What happens when blood sugar gets low? Pass out. <coughs> dizzy, shaky, angry, <laughs> paranoia, wanting to call the fire department. <laughs> uh, what happens when blood sugar gets too high? Headaches. Headaches. Jitters. Jitters, yeah. Well, let's think about it this way. So, um, higher blood sugar means your concentration of sugar in your blood is increasing, which means that it's going to be. Um, let's think about syrup versus juice. What are the attributes of syrup versus juice? Thick. It's thick. It's more viscous, right? And so if you have more viscous blood, that's going to be flowing less effectively. It's going to be creating more pressure at the vessel level. And you'll see, you know, risk for things like strokes and heart attacks increase in people suffering from diabetes. And so we don't want our blood too thick. We don't want it too thin, just like your Kool-Aid. You don't want Kool-Aid at all, but you don't want Kool-Aid. <laughs> you don't want Kool-Aid without sugar because it's super sour, but you also don't want too much sugar because it's, it's too sweet, right? So we want to be just right. So we want our sugar right in these kind of middle ranges. Um, fasting, you guys do not need to write this down. No need to know this, but fasting we want about 70 to 110. Um, after meal, we want to keep it below 40, about an hour later. But let's take a... Um, Let's take like a 1950s typical American breakfast of, you know, cornflakes, skim milk, banana, orange juice, toast with, you know, low fat margarine or jam, right? What are the attributes of that meal? Carbohydrates. Really high carbs, right? What's it lacking? Protein. Not much protein, probably not much fat either. So what's gonna happen to our blood glucose when we have that meal? Spike. Spike. How much is going to spike? A lot. A lot. Think, 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 a lot. So it goes way up. And remember, so that's where we go from, so this is our blood vessels right here. This is kind of like our happy medium, and this is what with more sugar in it. Little blue dots are sugar. Our, yeah. We don't like it all super high and thick, right? We don't like our blood sugar high. The body goes into a state of alarm. It can be fatal. So, how do we get that blood sugar down? Exercise. How do we get the blood sugar down immediately after a meal? What's your body's response to that? Insulin. Insulin, yeah, yeah. So insulin is a hormone that the body secretes. It's, let's make uh, insulin this red line. The body starts secreting that. And insulin's job is to take sugar, sugar from the bloodstream, and to put it other places. And where does it put it? The sugar can go into your muscles, and it can go into the liver. Your muscles can store about 400 grams of carbohydrate. Liver can store about 100 grams. Neat. So insulin facilitates the move of sugar from the bloodstream into your cells. Now, what happens when your muscles get full and your livers get full? If you have a 20 gallon gas tank in your car and you put 20 gallons of gas in it, what happens to the 21st gallon? It spills out, yeah. So these are gonna spill out and they're gonna spill out into adipose or fat cells. So you can create fat from sugar. Um, that happens in your liver mostly. Weird. So as this sugar is going from the bloodstream into these cells, we would notice that our blood sugar is doing what? Going down. Going down, yeah. Now here's your problem. Insulin is a protein-based hormone. It's not super sensitive, and so it's up, it's got a half-life, it's gonna be up for a certain amount of time. And so your blood sugar doesn't just come back down to normal and just like, cool, I'm gonna stay there. It keeps going. What happens um, Halloween? Kids go out, tons of candy, yeah. bouncing off the walls, sugar spike. What happens an hour later? A crash. A crash, yeah. So we have a rebound effect where we go hypoglycemic. And that's again when we start feeling that dizzy, that faint, that nauseous. So your body is in a state of alarm. What's it want to do? Get more sugar. Wants to get that sugar back up. Yeah. So what do you do? You crave sugar in your foods. And you eat sugar in your foods. You eat something you already and sugar goes way back up. Now here's the problem. In this situation, 
your blood sugar is low. But we've just established that we've taken all the sugar and put it in the cells. So, what's the problem? Is insulin blocks the release of sugar from cells back in the bloodstream. So insulin is, in many ways, Katie's med school student, so don't hate me for simplifying this process. In many ways, insulin is like a one-way hormone. So sugars go this way, and they don't go this way. So we've got these full tanks of sugar down here, but we can't get them into the bloodstream. And so we have to eat more sugar to get it back in the bloodstream. And then we get a big spike, we get a big crash, and then we put it back in the cells. They're already full, so we start making more body fat. And that's a huge problem with why we're having trouble and, you know, the, it's, it's normal to be overweight now, and especially the last 20 years. And so that's a huge deal. Is we want to kind of mitigate this insulin response. I would much rather see a blood sugar response where we have a very kind of slow and steady increase and a slow and moderate decrease. This is happening over four or five hours instead of every hour. Um, a lot of you guys have probably read articles suggesting like eat every two hours to stoke your metabolic fire. Mm -hmm. Those articles are usually also, and that works for some people, but those articles are usually also recommending, you know, high carb kind of low fat meals and that's eating every two hours to deal with these spikes. On the typical morning's breakfast, um, I don't like giving myself an example, but so we'll just say this other guy's team I know, but he has, you know, three, four eggs, and he has an apple, and with those eggs, he uh, sautés in some spinach, maybe has a cup of coffee, and five hours later, he's not hungry. Five hours later, he has to look at the clock, or he has to tell this other coach, I haven't eaten since blah, 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 I should probably eat, and, um, you know, so that's because blood sugar is normal, Guess what? Even if I haven't eaten for five hours, I've got some sugar in my muscles and sugar in my liver. And guess what? Even a very lean person has enough body fat on them. Even Ben has enough body fat on him that if he was put to the task, he could go out and walk 100 miles, actually up to 900 miles, just on the body fat stored on his body. Now, would he want to do that mentally? Probably not, but he has enough energy stored. So, can you go two hours without a meal? Yes. Should you? Maybe, maybe not. If you have enough energy, it's not there. You're not going to like starve. <laughs> Your body will most likely just stabilize his blood sugar and figure it out. So, here's another problem though is that, uh, you know, getting to where you can do this and be happy when it takes time. If your body has um, what's called low insulin sensitivity, you've got kind of higher insulin in blood sugar all the time, you're going to be more prone to more of these spikes and crashes, and you won't feel as good going periods without eating. But over time, as we fix your metabolism, we can get there. That kind of makes sense. Cool. I know that's kind of like some heavy stuff, but um, I think that is very useful for kind of understanding some of these mechanisms at play. Any questions on that? Yes, ma'am. If you are eating high protein breakfast and you still are hungry, um, is I that like immediately after eating or that? No, just a few hours. Um, now that high protein breakfast is an awesome food. Like, Always taste and, uh, and another protein, like um, some high quality meat. And yeah. Uh, veggies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you don't have to have like, a small snack, it's fine. Just again, make it kind of something you can go with. You know, something within the lines of what we'll talk about here in a bit. So, um, and you might actually. Sounds like um, you know you're not eating the carbohydrate with that as much. Veggies have a small amount. Um, common misconception is that paleo has to be low carb. It's going to be lower carb than what we normally do. But you guys are working your asses off in here. You guys are working hard. The type of work we do is very anaerobic. You are going to have a baseline need for some carbohydrate. So you know maybe adding like a half a sweet potato to that breakfast, even though it's adding, would actually make you sustain for longer. You might just need some carbohydrate. Um, but yes, ma'am. Do you always have to have breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend it. I would recommend it. I would recommend it for our purposes here with the amount of intensity we do here. There's some stuff that they're calling intermittent fasting. We actually recommend avoiding breakfast, but um, that's usually not in the presence of 
you know, 11 on the scale of 10 workouts. So that's not like doing Kobe 50 last night or 30 ball fair crawls today. So I, I wouldn't recommend skipping breakfast. You have some protein in breakfast. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Cool. So, kind of, kind of cramped my style up here, but let's look at this piece. So, we talked about you eat carbohydrates, you secrete insulin. Insulin causes sugars to go into cells. Insulin causes storage. Insulin's a storage hormone. Um, in a very, very simplistic sense, when you eat protein, you secrete a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon actually kind of has this opposite effect where it does let sugars go into the bloodstream. It mobilizes things. It mobilizes sugars and kind of mobilizes some, some uh, fat gases out of folks. So if, uh, she my dog's I forgot she was in the room. All right, so insulin storage, glucagon is mobilization. Would you say as a population, do we have too much storage going on or too much mobilization? Too much storage. Too much storage, yeah. yeah. So on average, we're probably eating too much carbs and not enough protein. On average. Not necessarily you. Um, in the middle is fat, so let's say here's a teeter-totter of insulin protein. Got some dumbbells um, coming in, shipping. Uh, we've got insulin protein, or sorry, insulin glucagon protein, uh, carbs, storage, mobilization. Fat's going to be kind of in the middle. Fat doesn't necessarily call, cause storage directly. When insulin is high and you eat fat, you're going to store that fat. But when insulin is low and you eat fat, it's, you know, maybe you burn it, maybe you don't. Um, but fat has a, almost like a lightning rod effect where it kind of minimizes the spikes on both ends. It also um, causes release of a hormone called CCK or cholecystokinin, and, and that uh, leads to satiation and feeling of kind of fullness, satisfaction, and it tastes good, right? Um, so kind of at the end of the day, what I want to make sure we're doing is that every meal I want to have some protein, we want to make sure that we don't have too much carbohydrate, but some is needed. I would like to try to make sure that those carbohydrates are from a healthier source, something that digests more slowly, um, something that's fibrous or bulky, like veggies or fruit, something kind of whole, and again, not too much of it. Um, so every meal, I feel like, should include not too much carbohydrate, but from healthier sources. It should have some protein, it should have some fat, it should have some fiber as well. We want kind of a balanced meal. Cool. So, that's the most intense thing we'll talk about all day, I promise. Cool. You guys are doing good. Omega-3s and omega-6s. 